Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Uh, I do, actually. But why? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. Okay, if it's going to help you any. <sighs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and Love G in the center. I don't know when he got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. Mr. Francis York Moore, the purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then, your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be informative and fruitful you will see so says mr stewart so harry you know something but there's some reason why you can't tell me yet is that what you're trying to say cut the poetic rubbish harry and tell us what you know we can force you to talk you know Mr. Francis York Morgan, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. Good evening, Agent. Good evening, Mr... Brian, the gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here. Looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Hmm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Anna, blonde hair, so bright. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zack. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? 
Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic. Gain one and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner and she'd always have a smile on her face. Always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. Hey, good looking. Nice speech. And you are? Oh, I'm Gina. I'm married to Jack. He runs the gas station. Call me the Rose. You look pretty revealing. Oh, <laughs> this old thing. Oh, you should see some of my other clothes. You? Oh, now you are cool. That scar really is a turn-on. You should come to my station. I'll give you a little extra service. That would be great. I can't believe how expensive gasoline is nowadays. Some extra service would be great. Now, about my current case. Do you have any information on Anna? Have you seen anything suspicious? Oh, I don't know. Talk to my hubby about the difficult stuff, okay? This is getting us nowhere, Zach. I've been sheriff here for a long time now, and this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life, to eat from or as a urine cup. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls, well, that is one thing, but... But those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> <clears throat> not sanitary? Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. It sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. 
The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course, but still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner, waiting on tables. <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. <laughs> so, where shall we go next? Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. First the victim, Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off and I found something inside her mouth. Do you remember what that was, Zack? That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed, but traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back and... One other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? That's right, a broken stiletto heel. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna and Miss Stiletto Heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. In any case, Miss Stiletto Heel may have vital information. We need to find her next. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. <sighs> I 
Have I forgotten anything? Ah, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zack? What do you think she was holding on to? That's right. A round object. The marks on her hand suggest a peace mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo of an upside down peace mark on his back. These two could well be related. But we don't know for sure. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who's out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back, it was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zach. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange, nostalgic, and sad almost. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. Ellie! Last time, Ellie! I'll eat later. You'll eat right now, young lady. You need to listen to your mother. I want to hear the rest of the story. Eat your lunch, then take a nap. Then I'll tell you the rest. But I want to hear it now. There's no need to rush things. You must live your life at the pace that is right for you. Zack, this case looks like it's directly related to us. I do not know how yet, but I do know I need some coffee. 
George said he'd have someone pick us up in the parking lot. Let's get some breakfast with Polly first. <laughs> 